Hi class, so I'd just like to make a short video explaining the weekly discussion board guidelines. I see often that a lot of students uh, don't really read it. Maybe they read it and don't quite understand it. So this video might help you understand the guidelines, which again are written in the syllabus. So the best thing to do is to look at the syllabus either while I'm while watching this video or just read it before, watch the video, read it again afterwards. So as you can see from the syllabus that the guidelines for the OP or original post and the response post have a specific format that they're required to be in. So first of all, your name must be in the title of your OP. So that's the original post you make. The thread that you make for that on the discussion board must have your name in it. So that way when people reply to it, they're replying to your name and it's easy to track and keep, keep uh, track of. This is especially important when I'm grading the posts so that I know whose reply, whose original post, the RP, the reply post, is written to. Remember, every OP and RP must have the basic same format except for the website one and the first one in which that you're doing the, the icebreaker and the one of the last ones where you're making your own topic Okay, so the making your own topic, the OP has a different format. When you are doing the website one, the OP has a different format. The reply post in both of those is the same, the four paragraphs. And then on the first one, you're just answering the icebreaker questions and then replying to the icebreaker questions, which should again be, not that's not going to be four paragraphs, but the length should be about the same. You want to write extensively. We're going to spend the whole semester together. So you want to get to know each other and you know tell us about yourselves. It also helps sometimes understand where you're coming from when you write about yourself on the icebreaker. So then the OP and RPs for every post other than those should be again four paragraphs, which a four paragraph is considered five to seven well-written sentences. Um, so it, it really needs to be structured into you know, ideas that you are presenting or adding to the conversation, the topic, answering the question. So every discussion board has a focus, a topic that you need to focus on, write about, reply to. Okay, and you could see that the three of four paragraphs should be fact-based. So basically you want to use mostly the textbook for that. Because while you're also using a textbook to make your your source, your your rep replies, and your OPs, your OPs and RPs, your discussion board things. You're also studying for the test. That's the same stuff that will be on the test. So, really using that textbook, utilizing the textbook, the information in the textbook is going to help you build the content for probably at least two out of the four paragraphs. So you're just you're just picking information from there that you're using and explaining and presenting to explain your topic. Then one of the four paragraphs should be an outside source, something that you pick that could be from the internet or a book or any other, you know, even an interview. And then the fourth one would be mostly built on your opinion, your information, your take on it, maybe a personal experience you have or a personal experience of someone you know. And it would be best if you could label those, right? So if you're doing the textbook paragraphs, you know, you're, you're just writing at the beginning or the end of the textbook, uh, that paragraph, that that's from the textbook. And the, the source that you're using for the third paragraph, you want to cite that at the end of that or at the beginning of that. And then, you know, the opinion one, it could be e easy to understand that you're labeling that opinion. So that way, whether it's me reading it or another student reading it and replying to it, they understand where each section is coming from. All right. So the like I said, the uh, reading the PowerPoint posts, PowerPoints, posts, lectures, discussions, and the textbook will help you with the content. So again, recommended to read the topic and, and even watch the video on that topic or the audio on that topic before you do the post, before you do the discussion board. That will help you with the content. Okay. So when you're doing a reply post, your goal is to not repeat anything the other person said and make sure you add new information to those posts okay it should not to, to that topic so whatever thread you're replying to you want to make sure it's not 
the same thing. You're not just saying the same thing. Sometimes people just reiterate the same thing and they say, I agree with this, I agree with that, and I agree with this. And they're just really saying the same thing as the other person. Unless you're saying, I agree with that, and then presenting new information to further support that, not just repeating that, oh yeah, I agree that 50% of this is this. Okay, that's not really helping. They're not really debate topics. Even though you can debate the topic a little bit, it's more just a discussion where you're presenting and exchanging information to help each other understand the topic. And again, some of them have some kind of different opinions that you're presenting. So it's, again, it's a discussion on trying to understand the topic better. And again, most of these topics, if not all, I mean, almost all of them are, unless you kind of pick a opinion way of explaining it that's not test related. Most of the topics are based on test questions that will be on the tests in this class. So it's going to help you prepare for that. So the sources of evidence, one is the textbook and the other one is the one other source that you're going to use. Um, and I do not recommend you post way ahead for future weeks because you should really need to read the, the, the books and uh, PowerPoint and hopefully listen to the videos and audios to help you with each chapter. So unless you're doing that, you should not be posting ahead. And you want to really get grades and feedback from several, at least a couple posts before you do that. If you really feel like you're doing good on the first one to four discussion board topics and you're getting good grades, you want to go ahead and do your OPs for the future because you know you're going to be on vacation and you, or you know you're going to have a busy week that week and you want to get ahead. That's fine. But the reply posts. You have to wait for other people to post, so you can't do those ahead of time anyways. Uh, let's see, what else? We have a couple etiquette things that are also important. So if you're, getting, if you're following the syllabus, the, you know, just read over just some things that you want to make sure you don't say to offend or you know, uh, create, make, make anyone uncomfortable in the discussion. And then, as it says in the syllabus as well, late or late OPs or RP posts will be accepted but you'll lose at least 50% of the value of the post. If you're posting it late, that means everyone else is done with the discussion, no one else is on that board, no one else is going to read it, so they're not really benefiting from it. And if, especially if your OP is late, that's making it difficult for other students to be able to go on there and find a OP to write an RP to. So again, it's uh, very important that those are on time Okay, so losing 50% is, is significant, but you know at least I, I do accept them. And that's again, 50% up to the full value. So if you write a one paragraph, you know, you only would get a 25% credit for that, and 50% of that's you know, 12 and a half, let's say. So it's not automatically up to 50%. It depends on the quality still matters. Uh, sometimes, again, going back to the five to seven well-written sentences, right? So five well-written sentences is not, you know, sometimes people write five what would be kind of phrases, little short half sentences. Okay, so I would say if you're not really sure, again, until you get an idea of what, how you're, you're getting graded on the posts, you know, just pay attention to that when you get your first few grades that you're, you know, uh, a well-written sentence by now, by the time you're in college, you should understand what a well-written sentence is. Okay, it's a complete thought. Okay, so five sentences that are individually complete thoughts, that's a well-written sentence. If you write a bunch of fragmented sentences, I'm going to count two or three of those together as one sentence. Okay, so, you you know, it's really, you, you want to make sure you sometimes write a little bit extra, that way in case you write something that's repetitive or doesn't really address the topic, like sometimes when students reply that they, they write a whole paragraph that, that has nothing to do with the topic that the discussion is based on so you're not getting credit for that but if you write a little extra somewhere else okay I could uh, apply that credit to that so sometimes it's better if you're not sure to write a little extra uh, more than the you know write five sent write seven sentences instead of five if you're, if you're doing you know five 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 in four paragraphs and it's just 20 sentences and a bunch of them are not really that well written or they don't really address the topic or they're not uh, quality sentences then you're standing a chance of not getting full credit but if you write you know seven for each and one or two of them in each paragraph are not so great well that way at least 
you know, you're not losing anything because you've written the minimum, you know, five cents per paragraph requirements. So I hope that helps you understand uh, what you should be doing for the discussion board. Okay, if you again also look at the the syllabus, it will break down the point content on that. I mean, that's uh, very simple. Each OP or RP is worth one point, which is also similar to one point on your average. So every OP and RP you miss, you're basically losing a point from your average. Okay, and the, 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 the main criteria, main reason people lose points is they don't write enough, or they don't cite their sources, or that their topic that, that they're writing about is not accurate.